Hello and welcome to what is the first video on my new photography channel. Um, I'm doing it in this setup. I don't think anyone's actually going to see this video, but I've got to do, I've got to start and do my first video. So that's what this is. Um, and I'm going to be talking about a recent purchase, which is this Fujifilm X-T30. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, why I have it what I like about it and what I don't like about it and I'll probably do a more in-depth video in the future but for now I'm just gonna uh, tell you a brief overview of what I think about this this whole channel that I set up is basically I don't really want to be talking about equipment and reviews so much I think I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'd, I'd like to go out in the field do a bit of photography and just join me on my journey of I guess discovery um, I'm not a professional well that's Kind of not true. Um, I was going to say I'm not a professional photographer, but I do use a lot of photography in my professional life. So I guess that makes me a professional, but not in the way that I think I'm not 100% photographer. So my techniques probably aren't quite so um, great. I'm still learning a lot as I go along. I've been doing photography since I was about 14 and I'm now 30, I'm nearly 33. So it's been something that I've always, always, always been interested in. I've had quite a few cameras over my time, but I've never invested that much money into them. I just kind of um, I make do with what I do have. Um, and so, yeah, I'd like to go out into the field, um, outdoors, in the studio, wherever I am, take some photography and video it while I'm doing some uh, different techniques as I'm learning as I go along as well so hopefully like you guys get to see what I'm learning because I don't know everything I don't know a lot of the techniques so I, you know I'm figuring it out as I go and you'll be figuring it out with me uh, and hopefully I'll learn a bit off of you guys as well if you guys mention stuff in the comments then I'll, I'll pick things up but what I have what I'm starting with is a video about this little nifter which is the Fujifilm X-T30 so i my original cameras were canons i started on like a the like the entry level uh 1000d back in like 20 uh, 2006 or something like that that was my first dslr i had other cameras before that I had film cameras before that um that were my like my mum used to use film cameras so i inherited those and i used to mess around with those when i was a kid so my first dslr was uh canon second one i moved on to the 7d which i still have i kept that i bought that in 2010 the 7d the canon 7d i thought was an incredible piece of kit i still i can't bring myself to sell it it's not worth anything anymore it's probably worth like 150 pounds now and i spent all my savings at the time not all my savings but a lot of my money at the time to buy that camera um and god that that camera's been everywhere with me it's traveled all the places i've been pretty much that camera's been with me so i love the canon system the canon system i think so far for me is my hands and my thumb and my fingers know where to fall on a canon camera and just it allows me to just not have to think about how to use it and as soon as that camera goes to my eye i can just take the photograph i want to take i can worry about what's out there and not what's happening with the camera so in at this i think it was the start of 2020 i decided to switch to sony and i bought an a6400 with what i think is a fantastic 18 to 135 lens i didn't have many lenses but i just started with that one and, and went from there and that ended up just being my all-round lens I switched to the Sony A6400 and um, I had mixed reviews. So I also just quickly let you know, I've never owned a full frame camera and I don't know if I will in any time soon either. I just, I don't know. I don't particularly, you know, think I've just never spent that much money and needed one. Um, but anyway, I bought this Sony camera. My feelings were mixed on it. I thought the picture quality and the video quality out of it were astonishing. It was, it was so good. Loved it. Absolutely loved it for that. But the usability 
and as a lot of you know the sony menu system oh my god oh my god the sony menu system and the buttons just didn't seem to make sense in my head and i owned it for like two years over two years and i and I used it very, very regularly. And every time I pick it up, I'm having to think where certain things are. And um, and then in that, in doing that, I've I've lost the mo the moment's gone, and I'm just kind of like, ah. um. So it's it's, I, I've started to realize that cameras have this extra spec that you don't see written on paper on spec sheets, and it's heart and soul, and so. My experience with Canon is they have a lot of heart and soul. My, I obviously have had the lower end earlier versions of Canon cameras, and I thought the picture quality was pretty decent. Um, it was lacking, or I guess the output was lacking in certain areas. Um, whereas I switched to the Sony and the output was fantastic. It got like crispy 4K footage. Um, it was just the 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 120 fps video was buttery smooth the pictures came out really really nice um but the on the heart and soul meter it just wasn't there and it took it out of me when i was trying to use it trying to take pictures trying to trying to uh record video it just it wasn't it was missing it was just it it took it out of me it made it harder for me to just create so then I kind of was, I was looking around as I've, I've been floating around YouTube. I'd seen a lot of people with Fuji film cameras. And um, the more I watched, the more I learned about Fuji cameras. Because on paper, I feel like they're perhaps like better than average. Not the best. I think like when you compare them to Sony on paper, it kind of like, oh, Sony's the one to have, uh, Canon even so, but everybody, almost everybody was saying Fuji have that heart and soul, the heart and soul meter is boop, 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 pinging. And that's, I thought that's what I want. That's what I want in the camera. I don't want specs. I'm not a spec junkie. I like, I don't particularly want, like, I'm not after the full, I'm not after like full frame cameras. I rarely used 4k on the Sony. I would have it set on HD. Um, I'm just not after the biggest and best that's out right now. That's it's not very me. But what I do want is when I have it and I'm using it, I want it to allow me to just do my best work, right? And best work doesn't necessarily mean 4K. Best work means make sure that the shot, the 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 message I'm trying to convey in the shot, and all the rest of it is just right, and it's coming from the right place. And that's what everybody was talking about with Fujifilm cameras. And I thought, I want to give that a go. So I advertised my uh, Sony camera. Um, I should have really just traded it in with MVP, but I, or MPB, should I say. Uh, but I ended up selling it on eBay and I got stung for fees. And I, I just wish I hadn't. In fact, I probably should have just kept it. But, but I thought, no, if I get rid of it, it will make me use whatever new camera I get. So I went for, this is the first time I've ever bought a used camera as well. So I'm trying to save a bit of money on the on the Switch and you prob could probably say, this is actually a bit of a downgrade. So I think the Sony was a really decent camera. I think this particular one that I've jumped into, the Sony X-T30 is spec wise, like just lagging behind the, the Sony, I would say in exp with my experience of it. Um, it's missing a lot of things like, low light's not quite as good and the autofocus is you know it's not quite as like the the autofocus on the sony was phenomenal this is good not quite as good um but 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 i really wanted to thrust myself into this heart and soul world of photography and so i i originally thought right okay look for an xt4 xt4 at the time the xt5 is out now as of this video but at the time there was no xt5 xt4 was the flagship xt line of fujifilm cameras and i thought it's got ibis i didn't have ibis in my sony uh a bunch of other things the spec was really great but the price of it i i just thought like oh okay well 
I'm still very much a hobbyist who uses it, uses it, who does some photography for work, but we have equipment there. I don't want to be spending a whole bunch of money if I don't take to it. I also think like, do I need to like really, really buy all this extra stuff? Like really the, the main thing that the X-T4 was giving me was IBIS. So anyway, 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 I digress. I looked at the X-T4. I thought, well, if I don't need IBIS, then I could look at the X-T3, which is very much the same camera. It's just like bump the specs down a little bit and remove the IBIS. And then I saw the X-T30 and I saw some reviews and I saw some videos on YouTube and I saw some users on YouTube where they said the X-T30 is like a little beast. It's like a X-T3's little sibling. And I thought, okay, well, what's wrong with that? Um, I don't use the maximum specs all the time. If, if ever, if ever, I don't think I've ever actually properly re done a job or recorded anything properly in 4K ever. I just choose not to. I prefer editing in HD. I don't know. I just don't see the point right now. Anyway, I opted for this. It's a used X-T30. And uh, it turned up just the body in an envelope. That's it. Uh, so it's lucky it didn't get damaged. Uh, but yeah, so this X-T30 turned up. It turned up with the little red uh, shutter button, which I, I quite like. And this extra grip so i think the person i get the feeling the person's been using it for uh some video work i i thought it didn't have the things and in a pinch i was i had to rush out last week somewhere so i just cut the uh, key ring and my canon uh um strap so please forgive how hillbilly that all is but i just needed it at the time and so i i put it on um, and yeah, so I've had it now for about probably two months, if that, not quite, around two months. And there's some things, uh, on the build-up of me getting it, I, I, I was thinking about it a lot. I want this, I want to, I want to try Fujifilm. I want to try Fujifilm. It was on my mind a lot. And so I, I got it. And some of the thing, it took me, you know, it took me a little while to get used to just putting my hands where they need to be. Again, I'll occasionally, once every six months, pick up my Canon 7D and my hands just know where to go. Even after all these years, after nearly three years of not using that camera, I can pick it up and just go, big dial on the back. Everything just, like muscle memory kicks in. And that's what I was hoping for with this because you, we have the dials on the top. So we have, um, we've got your shutter speed on a dial. Uh, you've got your... Uh, exposure compensation on uh, a, on a dial. Uh, you can map pretty much any button to do anything, which is great. So I've got uh, ISO on that button there, and I can go up and down. Um, and yeah, so I think my expectation of it was kind of like, okay, people are raving about Fujifilm, and I... I, I'm keen, I'm keen. And I'd say my experience of this camera is probably just under that. So it's still really good. It's just lacking in a few areas. But again, I didn't go for the the best model at the time. So I guess some of that's on me. But also, I think some things just don't quite click with me just yet. But I am also learning and the more I use it, even... This week I picked it up. I was like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. That's great. I'll do that more. Um, but yeah, so that's why I have this camera. Um, the pros about this camera are, uh, I'll, 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 I guess I'll just go through them. Um, the I think the main thing is these manual controls are pretty great right where you can just like whoop 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 you like i'm selecting my shutter speed right there um the uh is everything just being on a dial on the top not having to use menus it's one thing i really struggle with and you could you could customize the stuff on the sony but it just never felt right it always just felt like 
like ISO always felt like an afterthought on the Sony. And I don't know why it just never quite clicked with me. Um, I think the picture profiles, which Fujifilm are known for, pretty much any review that you see of a Fujifilm camera, say, set your picture profile if you're saving in JPEG, um, which have it saved to both JPEG and RAW. If you are using Fujifilm, you may as well make use of them picture profiles and have it set to classic Chrome. Classic Chrome is just it's straight out of the camera, JPEGs. Sometimes if you just want like a JPEG and just bang, ready to go, great. Like that is the profile to use. Um, so yeah, I think the one thing that's hard to quantify, excuse me, is that heart and soul thing. It does have it. It's it's hard to explain. It, it's just there. Um, when you bring it up and you, you, you know, you're using it and you just kind of, it's hard to explain. I don't know how to word it. I don't know how to word the thing I'm trying to tell you, but it makes you want to use it in a creative manner more than the Sony does. I'd say probably equivalent to what the Canon does. I'd say for me, the Canon puts me in that creative space. Sony took me out of the creative space. This puts me in it in the same place um, as, uh, as the Canon does. Uh, but it definitely, definitely allows you to do that. Um, a couple of the benefits is Fujifilm like to, the, the aperture ring is manual. Now, it took some getting used to. I'll be honest. First glance, I was like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. I could just do that and I can adjust my aperture. Whoa. Um, first of all, it always catches me off guard which way I need to turn it. It, it just does. It's not locked in with me yet that that way shuts it down, that way opens it up, or it might be the other way around. I actually don't know. Um, so, yeah, that is still something that I am working out. Um, but the fact that it is there and I know where to go for it is such, that's, that, that's everything. It being buried in a menu somewhere or on a touch screen, I don't want that. I don't want to be taken out of the real life moment. I don't want to be taken out of the real world and have to look on a screen. I almost don't want this screen on the back. If I can use it without that screen, perfect. Because it just takes me out of the real world. Um, I mean, one major pro of this camera is just how it looks. I love how they, 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 they have this classic look about them, don't they? Doesn't that just look cool? And also, this is the this model has the built-in flash, which, let's be honest, we're not using, but just the fact that it's on that little pulse switch there, and it's there, it's just nice. I occasionally just flick it up just for the feeling of that. Um, so, yeah, that's great. Uh, some negatives, I know I haven't listed off many positives, but it, it is a good camera. Some negatives, um, some things aren't quite so snappy. So like you're trying to select your shutter speed on here, but sometimes when you're doing video, you kind of want an in-between speed. So let's say we've got what, uh, we've got a 30th and then the next stop is a 60th. Well, if I'm after 48th, I kind of have to click it to 30 and then dial it up to that 48th. Um, same with one, what is it, two, 240 for if I'm doing slow motion video. Uh, you have to click it to 250 on there and then dial it in to 240 on there. So it's just little things like it's good that you can do that, but it's just it's missing the ones I want. Um, I don't know if that's different on different models of Fujifilm, but that's my experience with this one. Um, another one is low light. Struggle a little bit with low light. It always kind of wants to, uh, I mean, the, 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 I guess we're jumping back into the pros. The noise, if we're talking about low light noise, it's actually quite pleasant on this. I'm not against noise. A lot of people like, um, 
they like very noise free images i don't mind it i quite like it i like that vintagey feel but the noise has to be nice not so digital i mean it's always going to be digital it's a digital camera but so when if so the sony was the sony actually handled low light really well the canon's noise is very digital noise this kind of handles it quite pleasantly it doesn't take away from the image too much however sometimes when you're fighting light the camera doesn't win you end up with um you end up shutting your shutter speed down too low or and then trying to get the right iso sometimes just doesn't quite work in low light once you've got daylight great you don't have to worry about that um or maybe it's just me maybe i just haven't yet found that sweet spot with it so that's i guess what i'm trying to say um the major negative and it doesn't really detract from the using of this camera i hated 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 the app that came with the sony um for the sony system so the app on the phone connect to the camera sometimes you want to use the remote control i use like some tripod stuff and uh, do some like light painting different things it was terrible it would never connect and I, I, it would never connect. I've tried it on different phones, tablets, iPad. It would never work. So when I switched to Fujifilm, I thought, okay, I'm getting away from that Sony thing. Jumping into a new ecosystem, surely it can't be as bad. It's worse. It's actually worse. The app, sometimes you just, I just want to send a picture from here to my phone and be out somewhere. I want to send this to my phone just so I could do some quick, just some quick edits and send it to someone. And my God my god have i spent i've probably spent sometimes 20 25 minutes just trying to get it connect and the person's with me and I'm like i'm really sorry i'll send it to you later but because it's on my mind i keep trying to get it to connect and it's bluetooth and wi-fi so i think you're supposed to connect the bluetooth and then in do in connecting the bluetooth you open the app the app automatically connects it via wi-fi and then but you also have to have it on um picture preview mode needs to be on uh for it to connect but if you don't remember that it just doesn't connect but also it doesn't oh, that doesn't mean it works it just sits with the little swirly thing in the middle and then once one out of like 10 times of trying it will eventually connect but more often than not it just straight up fails and so it's so disappointing when you just want to pull a picture i've ended up buying i've i've got a little um for this purpose i've got a little us no light iphone lightning camera card reader but it's just another thing to carry around why why in this day and age i mean i was going to say 2022 we're not in 2022 with this model camera in fact this is the last day of 2022 tomorrow is 2023 this is new year's eve um but why in this day and age we'll say oh camera apps so bad the sony one was terrible this one even worse and i'm not sure maybe it's better on the android system or maybe it's my phone maybe it's i need a different phone or something but my god why are they so bad don't make them if if, if they're gonna be that bad please don't make them because it's actually a waste of my time it's not improving anything it's it's taking away from my time so um I, i'm waffling on now we're at 24 minutes uh, i'm gonna wrap it up but basically this is my first video on my new channel. Um, if you, I, I, I do have another channel. Uh, I'll link it down below. There's nothing to do with cameras. I do use, I used to use cameras quite a bit in that. Uh, like, as in, I used to use nice setups quite a bit in that other channel. But I've got to the point where I just use my phone now. and uh, So I've kind of lost the heart in trying to run that channel and also do the do some nice video quality. Uh, but that channel is about nothing to do with cameras. It's about tractors and engines and workshop stuff. So if you're interested in some like engines and workshop stuff, like go and check out my other channel. If not, don't worry. Stick with the cameras. Please subscribe. Be my first subscriber. I'd like you to be my first subscriber. Like if you're looking down and it says zero on that counter, please be the first one. Um, 
yeah, I've not done a proper setup here as well. I'm literally talking into my phone. It's in my windowsill just so I can get some natural light because I've not, I'm doing some DIY in my spare room upstairs. I am waiting. The reason I'm sat in the window as well is I'm waiting for some timber to turn up. Like I've got a delivery of some, uh, some wood, which I'm going to start sawing and cutting and continue working on the DIY. And then once that's all finished and set up, I'll hopefully be doing these videos from that room with some with a better setup from a desk lights and all the rest of it uh and yeah given the chance we'll be taking this out and we'll i'll try and get some videos made and we'll try some different techniques me and you together we'll do some photography some videography we'll try different things and let's see what we can achieve together i'll be doing a review of this i haven't mentioned this this is the 18 to 135 lens uh i, I, I this um holly my fiance got me this paid for this for christmas so um but i had it early like the cheeky little devil that i am so i'll be doing a review a different video and i'll review this lens what i like about it what i don't like about it uh i will just say 18 to 135 that is my golden range that's what i had with the sony so when i had when i switched to this camera i was like 18 to 135 that, i know that's what i want I, I i just know and i'm always working at that top end uh of the of the range but anyway again i digress that's not this video i need to make more content so you'll have to stay tuned and look for excuse me the next video because that's what i'll be talking about i also bought this uh it's 35 millimeter 1.4 uh i can't remember what brand it is that's how bad it is i think it's like mieke or something Niwa. but i think it's actually a mieke mikey made lens this is the cheapest lens on the internet right now. Uh, so I'll be doing a review of that. I've been out and about using this to see if I can actually get some good pictures from it. And so uh, if you subscribe, you'll be able to see that video of me using the cheapest lens on the internet to see if we can get it to work. That's everything. Uh, I'm going to love you and leave you. My name's been Tom Pepper. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.